Happy Friday. Um, if you're in the room and at any point you feel like you would like to go over into the sunshine, please feel free at any point in the next 45 minutes. You're like, oh, the sun is calling me because the sun part of the room looks very warming and nice. So if you feel like going over there, feel free. We will start either sitting or lying on your back. Um, if you prefer to sit, you can sit. As always, you know, if you're at home or in an office, look around, check, make sure you're in a really safe space. No cords or books or papers or anything you could slide around on. And then we'll take a few moments to let our bodies slow down and settle. And gentle reminder, you have total agency over this practice. So meaning if something doesn't feel comfortable, stable, supportive, or safe, that could be something physical, that could be with your breathing, it could be something energetic happening in your body. Please, please know you have total agency to back out of any exercise pose, any breathing exercise that we're doing. So meaning you never have to keep up with the group. You really can't do this wrong. And so from there, let's start practicing some mindful self-compassion. So as you settle into your shape, just drawing awareness to your body from the perspective of mindful self-compassion. So meaning that we're mindful and aware and we're practicing compassion for ourselves, just as we were talking to our very, very best friend, someone that we care a lot about, we love, treating ourselves with the same amount of care and respect. So as you're settling and checking in, just noticing your physical body, You might find it helpful to let the physical body feel the stability of the ground and the support of the ground allows you to let go. So sometimes we hold our bodies in gripping, holding patterns against gravity. If you notice that you do that, sometimes this might be a really nice opportunity to take a couple breaths, a couple moments to let the ground support you and to take a moment to let some of that grip go. You might just let half of a half of an ounce of that grip go. As you let a little bit of that grip grow, go, feeling your body connecting, you might feel a little heavier. You might start to feel a little more connected to the ground, to the floor. And authentically breathing, letting your body find a breath pattern for you. And then we ask your mind to kind of take a little bit of a back seat to the breath. Your mind can observe that authentic breath pattern. Your body can feel that authentic breath pattern. So we'll take about 30 seconds, just trying to quiet the mind, observing, body feeling the breath.
And then coming back with mindful self-compassion. So again, trying not to be judgmental <laughs> of where our thoughts might have gone, right? Maybe the thoughts totally left the body. That's okay. We can always bring them back with loving kindness, back to your body, back to the present moment. Minds wander. That's what they do. And then helping us stay a little more in the body, a little more focused, two full commitment exhales. So you'll take your inhale and then let all the breath out. Can you feel and pay attention and be patient through that release? And then we'll transition onto your back. So if you're sitting, we'll come onto your backs. And if you're on your back, we want to bend your knees. We're going to start and go through the dead bug series to wake up the idea and understanding of core stability and understanding of more of like this neutral spine. So when you come onto your back and your knees are bent, see if you can draw some attention to that S curve. Reminding yourself that everybody has a different S curve. Okay, so feet are going to start on the floor for a moment. And we're just going to feel the back of the skull, the soft curve of your neck, the length of the spine between your shoulder blades through the back of your rib cage down into your lower back. And when you get into your lower back, you'll feel that soft lumbar low back curve. And then your sacrum, that triangular bone in the middle of your pelvis. Maybe you'll feel your tailbone roll out. If you're somebody who tends to grip and tighten across the chest, this might be a nice time to take a couple of breaths just to kind of aha and exhale that little bit of tension out of the front of the shoulders and the armpits. And then with your strength and your awareness, as you bring your knees up over your hips, can you do this without changing the shape of your spine? And then your arms come up towards the ceiling. We're gonna straighten all the limbs up towards the ceiling. And then we're gonna bend your knees and bend your elbows. Imagine you have a foam block between your knees and your elbows. So they're coming in more than winging out. And then with an exhale, we're gonna lift all the limbs up towards the ceiling. Inhale, bend. Exhale with your exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. One more. And then we're gonna go contralateral. So right arm, left leg, exhale, extend, inhale, bend. Left arm, right leg, exhale, inhale. And going side to side, meet yourself with your breathing. Little bit like what we were doing earlier. Can the thinking mind come a little more in the background, moving, feeling your breath? One more or two more, kind of depending on where you are so you feel even. And then we'll take all the limbs up towards the ceiling. Now, if you need a break, take all the limbs down to the floor. We're gonna hold the limbs up for three breaths. If you took your limbs down, take them back up. And now you're gonna take all the limbs out to the side. So your arms a little bit like a T, your legs might feel a little bit like a V. And we're gonna exhale, pull them up to the ceiling. Two more. Go out with your inhale, pull in with your exhale. Stay going symmetrical like this, or if you want more challenge, try to keep the back of the shoulders and the back of the hips 
anchored and the back of your ribs. Then you go opposite arm, opposite leg, out to the side and back up. Everybody follows their own breath pattern. You go as quick or slow as your breath. Moving from your authentic breath. Couple more. And then we bring all the limbs back up. Hold the limbs up for about three breaths. If you need to rest, everything comes down. And bringing the limbs back up towards the ceiling if you were taking a break and bring attention to your back rib cage. See if you can feel the width and steady strength of the back ribs. So you wanna feel the back ribs going down into the floor. And we really wanna keep the back ribs down as you take your right arm and stretch it overhead and push out through your left heel and lower your left leg just a little bit. Did your ribs pop up? Try and keep them down on the floor and then swing everything up. Side to side. A little different challenge, you would feel your shoulders, your back shoulders, your back ribs and your back hips. And you're moving the limbs, stretching and lowering just to your challenge level. If you lower too much, you might pop the back up, trying to keep the back close to the floor. So going just slow enough that you can really feel and understand this, we'll do a couple more side to side. Inhale, you stretch long. Exhale, things pull up. And then we'll do a couple more and then coast everything up to the ceiling and then let everything come down to the ground, to the floor. Take a couple of breaths on your back. And then we'll take a five breath, mindful self-compassion break. So coming back to your breathing, you might notice the tone of your voice. Practicing being kind and thoughtful. You might even practice a little bit of gratitude and appreciation for the strength of your body, the strength of your mind. And when you feel two more exhales on that second exhale, we're gonna roll over and we'll all figure out how to come on up to standing. So just remember there's not one way to come up Everyone has their own way and ooh, come up. I have to come up slow. Ooh, I just got lightheaded. Come on up. <laughs> so if you come on up, give yourself a couple breaths and we'll take your feet wide. You can bring your hands down on your hips. So heels can come in a little bit and toes will go out. So there'll be a little external rotation in the thigh bones. And then just for your own understanding, feeling, rock a little bit through the feet. Just waking up balls of the feet to the heels. And you might start to notice everything else that shifts. Just if you rock forward, what do you feel all the way up through your hips and your shoulders and your neck and your jaw? If you rock back on your heels, what do you feel all the way up through your hips, your ribs, your chest, your jaw? And then putting the weight of your body where it feels most anchored and grounded. And also where it feels most open and easeful through the neck and the chest and the roof of the mouth and the head. And then we're gonna do a couple sumo. So we'll just go up and down at your own pace. Checking in, knees going out over your middle toes. You can go down a little bit or you can go down really low. You 
you might notice the more you do, the more limber or easier this feels in your joints. We'll do three more. Great, so one of the benefits here is that we take the hip creases back and we also get some flexion in the hips. So as I look around the room, there's some of us with the tailbone pretty tucked, doing it more like this. So you can really feel the hip crease here and draw that hip crease back and keep the chest more lifted. So let's try a couple like that. So you can feel your hip creases. The hip crease, the soft tissue there does draw back. And you can work on keeping the ribs down and in and the chest up. Let's try two more like that. Sweet, then we'll come on up. Keep your legs strong and wide. And then we're just gonna work in the shoulder blade area a little bit. So we'll take your arms forward and up. And I turned around so you can see the shoulder blade here slide up. And then in taking the arm down, the shoulder blade will slide down. And then the arm can swing down, okay? So in your own understanding, maybe you visualize those shoulder blades taking a few moments to feel notice what you can't see in your back body. And then it will be more challenging to really focus on midline stability, keeping the ribs down and in. So if you're really tight in the chest, when you take the arm up, when the shoulder blade slides up, there might be a chance you're pushing your chest forward and missing out on the stretch in the shoulder and just arching the back. So as we just do two more, coming back to that hallmark we talk about every class, ribs down and in, keeping those ribs down and in as the shoulder blades and the arms slide up. And then we're gonna do both of these last two exercises together. So you'll go down in your sumo and take your arms up and you'll come up and swing the arms back. Now, when the arms swing back, palms swing up. Huh? And you're going at your own rhythm with your breathing. Inhale down, exhale, push it up, swing it back. If you wanna add a little bit of hip extension when you come up you can take your pubic bone and push it forward a little bit now when this happens make sure again just for the first couple that you're really keeping your ribs down and in and not arcing and overly compressing your low back okay so let's do about five more just with your own breath at your own rhythm Last one, we'll come all the way on up. Step your feet together and pause. Five breaths again, maybe practicing focus on your breath, maybe practicing mindful self-compassion. Maybe you daydream for five breaths. And coming back, can you feel your exhale? Then with your next exhale, stepping your feet wide again. So putting your hands up on your hip bones, let's define your hip bones. So you have your pelvis, which is really your right and left hip. And then we're gonna move your leg bones around in your hip socket. So you're just gonna take your left leg in, your right leg out. And then you're gonna to go to the other side, right leg in, left leg out. 
and just doing this a few times. And you feel how your leg bones rotate a little bit like rolling pins in the sockets. Nice and tall and strong from your hips to your ribs to your shoulders. And then the next time your left leg rolls in a little bit and your right leg rolls out, we'll pause and go about heel to heel. Hands on your hip bones can lift the front of the hips up. So feeling those pelvic crests lift up, shoulders can relax. Take an exhale to soften the jaw, the tongue and the eyes. Good, just three breaths. We're gonna inhale, bend your right knee. Exhale, push down into the floor to straighten. Two more, bending, grounding to straighten. Sweet, next time both legs are straight, let your arms come down in front of your body. Then we're going to do the pull or the reach up bending and then pulling and straightening. So you might imagine you were in warm water. You had to pull something up, pull something down. Good. Last one. So your right knee will be bent and your arms will be up. See if you can feel the shoulder blades sliding up your back. Great, then we're gonna tip at the hip, either your right hand or your right elbow will come to your knee. If this is too much on your left shoulder, bring your left hand to your rib cage. Three breaths. Feel, notice your exhale. And come all the way back on up. Arms can come up, right leg rolls in. Left leg rolls out, hands come back to your hips. Good, let's roll the legs around in the hip sockets a couple more times. It's good on your ankles and your thigh bones, your hips. Then when your left leg rolls out and your right leg rolls in a little bit, pause. Go about heel to heel, lift the front of the hips up, exhale, bending your left knee, ground down to straighten. So you're gonna push that left leg down and then whoo, down creates up. Sweet, next time your left knee's bent, pause. Take your arms down in front of your body. Press down, slide the shoulder blades up, stretch. Two more. Great, then let your left knee be bent with your arms overhead. Tip at the hip, hand or elbow to the left knee, right arm can reach up. This is too much on that back right shoulder, don't stress it. No big deal, let it bend, three breaths. Full exhale, push down, come all the way on up. Good, couple more, just rotating the legs and the hips. If you want a different challenge, you might take your feet a little wider. See what that would feel like. And then we're gonna end with our toes or feet facing straight ahead-ish. Great, so if this is comfortable for you, stay here. Sometimes in this shape, as you kind of find more of that center of gravity, this might feel like it's a lot on your knees or in your hip. So if you're feeling that, you can definitely come back to more of that sumo stride where heels are in, toes are out, okay? We're gonna bring your hands up to your hips and do a little bit of side bending. So when we side bend, trying to keep your ears back with your shoulders and your shoulders over your hips. 
We want to feel the side bend come more from the rib abdominal connection, less from the neck and the jaw. Okay. So a nice place to start here is to relax the tongue. You can let the tongue kind of curl on the top of your mouth. Let the back of the throat relax. Let your neck relax out and down into your chest. So working and feeling a little more connection through the abdominals and those ribs, side bending over to the right. And coming up and going over to the left. Now, you can always incrementally side bend more. So allowing your body to work with your breathing, you're breathing in your body, do a handshake. They work together to create the side bend. Okay. If you would like a little different challenge, you can bring your arms up and let your arms go with you. Reach from the bottom arm to pull yourself up. Can the back shoulder stay stacked over the back hip? If you want a different challenge, you're going to come down into more of a sumo squat, pull yourself up and squat it back down. Okay. Everybody has a place of challenge. You might still have your hands on your ribs. You might not be squatting. Meet yourself where you are. Two more to each side. After those two, we come all the way back on up. Take your arms down, your choice, either feet wide or feet together, five breaths. How can you use five breaths to take care of yourself right now in this present moment? And feeling and noticing whatever it is you're feeling and noticing, no one can hear your thoughts but you. And then stepping your feet wide. One more time, left leg's gonna roll in and right leg's gonna roll out. I'm gonna go about heel to heel. Bending that right knee. Now we're going to sweep the arms out to come up and then we're going to like side bend over. So we just did the side bend. So you can let your right elbow or your right hand come down to your thigh bone. Okay. A little different. You're going to take this left top arm and bend it and bring it to your bottom right ribs right through here. And you're going to pull those ribs up to help you spine the side bend through the left side. So you can feel as you pull those ribs up, those ribs contract. You can feel those abdominals knit. If you want more challenge, a different challenge, bend your knee more. Keep those bottom ribs lifting up and then maybe take your left arm back up. Good, rotate so your palm faces your head or the front of your mat and reach your arm overhead in front of your face. So you can see the tricep and then pull your arm out of your back toes. Awesome. Top ribs, maybe side bend a little more. Sweet, come all the way on up. Woo, right leg rolls in, left leg rolls out. How is that? <laughs> Those are parts I never knew I had. And then bending your left knee, right? Sometimes I'm like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Didn't know that part could stretch. 
Good, let's take your arms up. We'll go into it just a little bit differently this time. Reach on up, side bend over, elbow to knee. Right arm comes around on those bottom left ribs. Pull those ribs up, side bend. Little different challenge. Maybe you bend your left knee a little deeper. Good. Can you feel those top ribs Ooh, reaching up to the ceiling as you take your right arm? Then you rotate your right arm towards your head and reach that palm out of your back foot. So back right pinky toe to right pinky finger reach. Push those ribs up. Lateral line stretch. Keep breathing. Then pull yourself all the way on up. Ooh, that deserves five breaths. So we'll just step our feet together. Ooh. Five breath break. Taking a full exhale. The end of this exhale, letting your eyes open if they're closed. And then we'll walk to the back of your mat. And we'll do half of a sun salutation here. So finding your feet, feeling your feet connecting back down into the ground. Before we go into the sun salutation, let's just practice softening where we might need some softening. That might be again through the roof of the mouth. Might let your tongue relax. Feel the jaw, the throat, the chest, the shoulders. You feel a little more connection into the center of gravity down behind your navel, through the pelvis, strength, grounding through the legs into the ground, into the earth. And then following along, we'll go pretty slow. Exhale, arms flow out to come up, shoulder blades slide up, stretch through the back ribs, stretch through the shoulder blades, bend your knees as much as you need with your next inhale, we fold forward. Exhale, you can lift your chest. Inhale, fold. And then exhale, we're going to walk out to either a tabletop or downward facing dog. So you decide where you want to go. Set up your shape. So each one of us comes back and checks in with ourselves. If you're in down dog, gentle reminder, you might want to bend your knees a little bit, a little bit like that sumo towards the beginning of class. Take those hip creases back. Let your head hang. Try and get that feeling ooh, a little more length in the low back. If you're in tabletop, Lining your ears with your shoulders, your ribs, and your hips. Let's all take three breaths. When you feel your next exhale, that will be your cue to come and build your table if you're not already there. And then this gentle reminder, if table hurts your wrist, you can make fists and come onto your fists. You can also come down to your forearms. So you might wanna go through all of those different places and decide which one works best and is most supportive for you on this Friday. Then when you decide, three rounds of cat cow. Remember in your cat cow, your cat is where you round your spine like the Halloween cat. 
And then your cow, we're looking for some, I guess, cow. Somebody once told me this was like a cow eating a carrot. I can't visualize it. But I try every time. <laughs> That, that those person's words have followed me for years. It's a cow eating a carrot. Can't you see it? I'm like, no, but maybe you can. So you know, finding some articulation and extension, especially in your mid back, in your back rib cage area. You might find it helpful to Visualize your vertebrae like beads on a string and each bead getting a little bit of movement on the string or on the wire. And then as you're transitioning through, I said three, I'm sure we've done like five. <laughs> if there's kind of a place where it's a little interesting, there's some curiosity, you could hang out there. Or if you prefer, you can press back into a child's pose or you could roll onto your back because we're going to head onto your back after this so you could come onto your back and we'll take two full inhales and two full exhales and then again the cue is your breath when you feel your exhale, we'll transition and come onto your back. And we'll come all the way back to a constructive rest pose where we started, bending your knees. Arms can come nice and wide down by your side. So let's define nice and wide. So nice and wide is more like your thumbs on the mat and your pointer finger and the rest of your finger hand off of the mat. So like your thumb could still be on the mat and the four fingers are off the mat. And then letting your body again, just release into the floor. Nothing else to do right now, but let your body release into the floor. And then bringing attention down to your belly button and your pubic bone. So we're gonna do a couple pelvic rocks here. You're gonna push your belly button into the floor and then push your pubic bone. Going as slow as you need to, to feel and understand this movement. So as you push your pubic bone down, can you feel how your upper back pops up off of the floor? There's like a really big gap. And when you push your belly button down, there's no more gap. You can stay right here or you can start to roll up into bridge. So as you push your belly button down, you can start to slowly peel up, 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 up into a low bridge. When you get up into your low bridge, pause to feel a little more weight in the heels of your foot. I guess I should say feet. And then to lengthen, like your knees could go forward over your toes and then press your sacrum up. And then roll all the way back down, vertebra by vertebra. So your ribs will come down, then your low back, and then your hips. We'll do one more. When you get down to the bottom, take a two or three breath break. Little pelvic rocks, if those felt good, if those were beneficial. And then you press your belly button down and spend some time slowly rolling up your spine. Now we're gonna add on to this 
by trying to keep your chest and your throat a little more relaxed. It's really easy to start to grip and hold your bridge from your throat. So just noticing if you're doing that, it's not wrong. Just see if you can let go a little bit of some throat tension or jaw tension. If you're gonna hold your bridge, remember the weight a little more in your heels. We're looking for length from your belly button to your pubic bones, so like your shins or your knees would go forward. And you're pressing your sacrum up. That triangular bone at the end of your spine between your butt cheeks goes up. And then you can hold a little longer or ooh, let it come down vertebra by vertebra. And when you feel everything come down, rest. And come back for a five breath, mindful self-compassion break. Coming back to treating yourself with kindness, respect, strength. Might be a nice time to practice gratitude for the strength of your body, for being healthy, for having a practice. And then we're gonna bend your knees and just roll over to the easiest side. Ooh, and come on up to sit. So you could sit crisscross applesauce if that works for your hips. If you're in an office or at home and you have a blanket or a block you want to sit up on it, great. So either crisscross applesauce or maybe your feet out in front of you. Okay. On our own here, we're going to find your rib cage. We're going to anchor down through the sit bones and the thigh bones and just gently, so it's gentle, moving the ribs to the right, to the center, to the left. Little bit of gentle twisting. Keeping your sit bones and your butt nice and anchored and heavy. Do one more to each side. And then we'll coast back to center, keeping your hands on your lower ribs, letting your elbows feel a little heavy. And three breaths into the lower rib cage. And then taking a full commitment exhale, let go of the air, letting your eyes open. And checking in with ourselves, coming back inward. How are we feeling? How would you, you feel physically? Energetically, emotionally? And then we'll take the last minute here to practice mindful self-compassion. So you could keep in this seated shape. You could roll on your back. You could do some stretching. Just coming all the way back full circle, bringing your attention back in. You have total agency. So maybe you just want to go and daydream. That's great. Maybe you want to focus your awareness on breathing, loving kindness. We'll take the last minute in silence.
Just coming back to your breathing. Nice, patient, aware, two more breaths. And starting some movement, maybe wiggling your fingers and your toes. I really don't know. Can you wiggle your fingers and your toes and still feel your breathing? Can you draw your knees into your chest and feel your breathing? And then rocking a little bit side to side, we'll roll all the way over and come on up to sitting. Ah. Thank you everyone online. Thanks everyone who showed up in person. Happy Friday. Namaste's, thank yous and high fives. Thank you.